Chalanad Bhakti Vilanda Gosami, Shila Prabhupad Kijai, Iskan, founder Acharya, Shila Prabhupad Kijai, Anantakoti Vaishna Vrenda Kijai, Namacharya Shila Haridas Thakur Kijai, Prem Se Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda, Siyadweda Gadadha Shiva Sadi Go. Bhakta Vrinda Gajaya Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopanath Sahim Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Gajaya Vrindavanam Gajaya Vajradam Gajaya Vrindasami Gajaya Yamunamai Gajaya Shimati Kalasideva Gajaya Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Gajaya Gaur Priminanda Hanimoni All glorious the assembled devotees All glorious the assembled devotees all glories to Sri All glories to Shri Guru and Gauranga Shri Prabhupad Ki Jai Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swamani Dinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharani Nivashesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Dejatarani Saumaganat Timbaranda Shat Gananjana Shlakaya Chakshur Unmini Tam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada, who so kindly opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge while I was blinded in the darkness of ignorance. So we want to welcome everybody to Nuga Loka for the Sunday program. Of course, not so many people today because a lot of our people are in New York for the Rath Yatra or traveling otherwise. So, uh, last week we spoke about what's called the Panihati Festival. Panihati Festival is the festival where Lord Nityananda, who is Balaram, gave the mercy to Raghunath Das Goswami to join Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we're going to talk a little bit about that story and read some verses from the Chaitanya Charitra, really just to bring you up to speed. Because today is the actual commemoration day of the Pani Hati festival. So I think it's appropriate. Uh, actually, I had a PowerPoint about a more intense philosophical issue, but I thought we'd wait till there are more people here for that. The PowerPoint was about, is bhakti inherited or inherent? That's a very interesting subject matter. Uh, and I wanted to have a maximum amount of people for that because inherited means do you get it for some, from someone else and you don't have it? Or is it there in your heart and someone just has to say, wake up, you rascal? And then it wakes up. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, maybe next week or maybe the week afterwards. But in any case, today we're going to talk about Raghunath Das Goswami. And Raghunath Das Goswami, to fill you in, and you heard a lot of this last week, uh, is uh, one of the direct disciplic descendants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared over 500 years ago, and his direct disciplic succession uh, descendants 
Uh, the most prominent of them were the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. And they're called the six Goswamis of Vrindavan because they were sent to Vrindavan to do different things. One thing is they were sent to Vrindavan for was to uh, find the holy places. Because the holy places of Vrindavan, that is the places where Krishna Chandra had uh, executed his various activities like killing demons, dancing with the gopis, uh, stealing butter, uh, feeding it to monkeys, you know, all those nice things that Krishna did over 5,000 years ago. Uh, these places were pretty much unknown by the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, why were they unknown? It's an interesting question. Well, let's give a little history. After Krishna left the planet, Krishna had a great-grandson. His name was Rajan Nava. Some of you may have heard about him before. And Rajan Nava, he went to Vrindavan, or the Raj area, because when we use the word Vrindavan, we're actually referring to the whole Raj area. Actually, Vrindavan has 12 main forests and so many Upavanas, you know, minor forests. But the main forest is called Vrindavan Forest, so sometimes the whole area of what we call Raj is called Vrindavan. So he went to Vrindavan, Raj, to uh, establish the holy places and to install deities commemorating Krishna's pastimes. So he installed many of the original deities, like Radha Govinda and his deities to Krishna Balaram in different places, and there's you know, Shringa deity he installed. I mean, all sorts of deities he installed because at the tail of Govardhan, you have all the various incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so he installed some deities, like especially the Shringa deity, uh, over five, well, it was approximately 5,000 years ago for Brajanava. So anyway, so he did all that. And guess what happened? Over the time, the passage of time, the places became pretty much lost. Nobody knew where they were anymore. And in many cases, nobody knew where the deities were. Uh, and in many cases, the deities were hidden. Why? Because there were invaders that came of a particular religion. I don't want to be discriminatory. But there are invaders, I mean the Mughals, basically. They came to Braj area and actually all over India and destroyed many temples and tried to destroy deities. If you've ever gone to South India, even, even in so far as, let's say, Orissa or parts of Andhra Pradesh, where uh, the Mughals did go, they would actually even smash the figures on the outside of the temple carvings, you know, where there were faces. So they would smash these faces on the outsides of the temple. Terrible, terrible. So anyway, so many of the deities in Vrindavan had been hidden. Uh, Govindaji was underground, and Rupa Goswami discovered him. And then you had other deities that were hidden in Mathura, like Madan Mohan in someone's house, in the Chobe Brahman's house. And so, and then you had uh, Gopal. Not Gopal. Gopal, the Gopal deity, who was uh, basically hidden in the bushes, and later had to be uh, taken out by Madhavendra Puri and his associates. And later on that, Gopal went to Nakwa and became uh, Shinachi. So that's the same Gopal was there. And many of the deities eventually were taken out of Vrindavan and brought to other places like Jaipur, like Radha Govinda is worshipped in Jaipur. So you have a history there. But in any case, the places of Krishna's pastimes were actually lost and basically nobody knew where they were. And even when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Vrindavan, uh, he discovered uh, Radhakund and Shamakund. And how he discovered Radhakund and Shamakund is quite interesting. 
he discovered just two ponds in the paddy field you know, for growing rice or something like that. And he jumped into these ponds, these little ponds. I mean, maybe they were the size of this section of the room right here. And he started splashing water on himself. And so he declared, this is Radha Kun and Chandra Kun. So of course, he's Krishna himself. Uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nayanya. He's Krishna in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So he knew where he had those pastimes uh, long ago. So, but the other Goswamis discovered other pastimes, and today devotees go to Vrindavan to uh, go around and uh, see these pastimes become enlivened in Krishna consciousness. Not exactly see pastimes, but remember the pastimes. And the pastimes are still occurring in what we call a prakrita lila. That means unmanifest, but not manifest to us, but they're manifest to pure devotees of the Supreme Personality of God. So these six Goswamis not only did that, uh, as far as uncovering all the holy places, they established the main deities in Vrindavan, like Radha Govinda. Of course, these deities later were, uh, in the beginning, were discovered and then installed. Uh, Radha Govinda, Radha Shandra Radha Gopinath, all these deities were installed by the Goswamis or their followers and associates. So that was a Big duty. But perhaps even the most important duty the six Goswamis of Vrindavan uh, had was to, uh, as described by Srinivas Acharya, Anana Shastra Vichara Naki Nipano Saddharma Samstapako, which basically means it was their duty to establish something called Sat Dharma. There's many interpretations of the word of the word dharma you know sometimes people think that dharma means just like what job i work at uh, or dharma means you know my family but there's something called there, and these things are, are dharma in one sense but the actual meaning of the word dharma comes from that which sustains something which cannot be separated from anything else in other words, as Prabhupada explained, the dharma of uh, fire is heat, the dharma of water is liquidity. It's something that's an essential quality of something. And of course, we know from Lord Chaitanya's teachings, what is the Jivera Svuru Bohoi Mitra Krishna Das? The dharma of the living entity is to be a servant of Krishna. Uh, in other words, Jivera Svarupa, our form, our own form, our own identity is as a servant of Krishna. So the Goswamis of Vrindavan, of course, they established that in their writings. And uh, Raghunath das, das Goswami wrote extensively, especially his Malachiksha and other literatures. But they established that, but not only that, they elaborated on that particular concept to uh, establish what's called Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojana. That means understanding the Lord and all of his energies, you know, which include you know, time and karma and the material world in general and Durga and the spiritual world and the incarnations of Krishna and the expansions of Krishna, the different types of expansions of Krishna. Uh, so they elaborated on that, which is called Sambandha Gyan. And then, uh, especially Rupa Goswami elaborated on what's called Abhideya. Abhideya means what or how you should function in your life to achieve the ultimate goal. And this is generally described as the aspects of Sadhana Bhakti, that means bhakti in practice, which includes, after the bhakti in practice, which is called vaiti bhakti, which includes uh, raganuga bhakti after that, which is spontaneous devotional service, and after that includes bhava bhakti, which means doing devotional service in ecstasy. And ultimately, uh, what's called prema bhakti, but that was dealt with primarily 
by Raghunath Das Goswami, who taught prayojana. Prayojana means the ultimate goal. So there's, there was a division of writing between the six Goswamis and Prindavan. Sanatana so Goswami presented the Sambandha, the different truths and the relationships between the different truths or the tattvas. Uh, and then uh, Rupa Goswami presented the Abhideya, the process of devotional service. That's why Srila Prabhupada would sometimes uh, say that we are all Rupa Nugas. That means followers of Rupa Goswami because we follow the practice that he gave us in our daily lives. I mean, Rupa Goswami not only gave us practices that we perform in the temple, but in our own homes, insofar as what we eat, and how we practice Krishna consciousness, which is really nice. And then, of course, Raghunath Das Goswami, who I'm speaking about today, he gave us uh, the practice of what happens when we achieve perfection. Because we need to have something to look forward to, right? You know, what is perfection? Uh, what does it mean to be immersed in one's eternal relationship with Krishna? Uh, what does it mean in terms of what we have to give up? So, Raghunath Das Goswami's life was quite interesting. Uh, the other Goswamis, uh, their life was, of course, very interesting too, but Raghunath Das Goswami was the most renounced in an external sense of all the Goswamis of Vrindavan. What do I mean by this? Well, he was born in a very wealthy family, extremely wealthy family, what we would call like, uh, I guess, Elon Musk's family or <laughs> Bill Gates' family or something like that in the modern parlance. And he was attracted to Lord Chaitanya, to join Lord Chaitanya. Yet his parents wouldn't let him join Lord Chaitanya. Why didn't his parents want him to join Lord Chaitanya? And he could have joined Lord Chaitanya at home, but his parents wanted him to be a materialistic person. What Prabhupada called, or what they used to call, pound shillings and pence person. So he was determined to join Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a little bit of the story we told last week. And he saw Lord Chaitanya two times. Lord Chaitanya told him at least the first time, just go back home and just act like a normal person. Because at that point, he hadn't achieved the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda's mercy is extremely important, essential, necessary, in order to become completely spiritually absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Uh, because he is the original spiritual master. He is Balaram, Balaram, Hoyla and Nittai. Okay. Because he is Balaram, and uh, Balaram is the original spiritual master, and no one can become God conscious. Nayamakba, Bala, Hirina, Labdwa. Nobody can become God conscious without getting the mercy of Balaram. So, when he approached Lord Nityananda, then all the pieces fell in place so that he could leave his comfortable situation and join Lord Chaitanya. His parents didn't want him to join Lord Chaitanya. They had guards on him 24 7. And so, as soon as he got Lord Nityananda's mercy, he left, was able to leave by trick in the middle of the night and join Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. That's where we're getting to right now. And in Jagannath Puri, he was able to. Uh, witness more of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's activities than any of the other Goswamis of Vrindavan. The other Goswamis of Vrindavan visited Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri, but Raghunath Das was with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for many, many, many years. In fact, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world by entering into the Tota Gopinath Devi, Raghunath Das could not bear the separation from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he decided to go to Vrindavan to end his life. He was going to jump from Govardhan Hill. Don't do that. So he decided to go to Govardhan Hill and 
end his life because he couldn't bear the separation. So the other six Goswamis, the other five Goswamis, decided, along with others like Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami, who's the author of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, and that's one of his verses up there on the board, uh, uh, were able to entice or persuade Raghunath Das Goswami to tell them about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya that they had worshipped and were, that they had witnessed. And so uh, he spent the remainder of his life telling these pastimes. Every day they would speak for two or three hours about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And therefore we have this elaborate biography about the pa uh, final pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri uh, by the mercy of Raghunath Das Goswami and written down by Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. Of course, some of the initial pastimes are more elaborately described in the Chaitanya Bhagwat by Vrindavan Das Thakur. So we encourage to read both of these books. So anyway, so as far as Raghunath Das Goswami's stay in Jagannath Puri, uh, when he first arrived in Jagannath Puri, having escaped from home, he had gone through the uh, forest for 12 days and had not eaten more than three or four of those days and actually was quite gaunt. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him his remnants for uh, five days. and But after that, Raghunath Das Goswami decided not to take Lord Chaitanya's remnants, because I would probably take his remnants continually. But he decided basically to uh, uh, beg at the gate of the Jagannath Temple, the Singhatwara gate of the Jagannath Temple. And in this way, Lord Chaitanya was very pleased by his begging because he had, uh, oops, did I put everybody on mute? I don't think I did. Uh, I did, yeah. Because in this way, he, he had actually exhibited extreme humility because it's very difficult for someone with a lot of money to be humble. Uh, Queen Kunti talks about this in the Bhagavatam. She says, Janmaishvarya Shutta Shutta Shivi or Edamana Adalpuma. That people become proud, incapable of crying out for Krishna when they have a so called good birth, you know, prominent birth. That's what I mean by good birth. Janmaishvarya money, opulence, shrutasha, they're very learned, or shivir, they're actually very intelligent or physically attractive. So these are sometimes considered impediments. It's not that everybody in order to be a devotee has to be ugly, poor, uh, from a bad family. <laughs> Don't worry about that. But the point is that we have to avoid the false pride that arises from these particular situations. Because as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu talks in his Shikshashtika, or writes of his Shikshashtika, Trinadapi Sanui Chena Turari Vasihishna Manina Manadena Kirtani Asadari. In order to be absorbed in Krishna's name continually, because Krishna's name is non different from Krishna, it's a Yuga Dharma, then one has to cultivate abject humility lower than the straw in the street, devoid of all sense of false prestige. And the hardest one is what? Offering respects to all others. Not considering oneself very important. As they say, true humility means to think uh, of yourself less, not less of yourself. You understand? It's not a person who thinks less of themselves oh, I'm bad, I'm horrible, whatever. But true humility means to think of others. Think of yourself less. So, Raghunath Das Goswami was thinking, of course, he was always a pure devotee, but these are pastimes that shows how he was determined to cultivate humility and all sorts of good qualities. And so he was begging from the Singhar Dwara Gate. And that went on for some time, and after that, I'm going to leave out part of the pastimes now. But after that, he actually stopped doing that. And then he was going to the uh, free kitchen. And the reason he stopped doing that was because 
he thought by begging, I am discriminating between who is a nice person and who is not a nice person. You know, a nice person gives me food, a not nice person ignores me. <laughs> I remember one time, many years ago, I was uh, with some of our devotees at the airport that were distributing books. And one devotee said, well, here comes a sweetie. <laughs> Not a girl, you know, it was a man. So someone who he could distribute a book to. And, you know, of course, there had to be some discrimination in book distribution. You don't want to distribute to someone who's going to punch in the mouth. So, but in any case, Raghunath Das Goswami wanted to cultivate this mood of Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hashtani Shuni Chai Vasvapaki Chai. Pandita Samadarshana. The Bhagavad Gita says, you know, the one learned and gentle sage sees with equal vision all living entities. So that's why he actually started or stopped taking food from people by begging and then went to the kitchen, the free kitchen. And Lord Chaitanya was very, very pleased with him. And eventually, he even stopped doing that, and he was taking the rejected rice that even the cows wouldn't eat, and he washed it with a little water, put some salt on it, and he took that prasadam, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally came up to Raghunath Das, and he took some of that prasadam from Raghunath Das and ate a morsel of it. Uh, Swarup Dhammarag Goswami forbade him to eat anymore. So one may say, you know, this is really extreme renunciation. Well, there, there's explanations for this. A pure devotee of the Lord has no, a Nitya Siddha, pure devotee of the Lord, has no material considerations insofar as maintaining the body. His body is completely spiritual. So we find that Raghunath Das Goswami would rest maybe an hour and a half a night, and sometimes not even that, and sometimes eat a pat of butter every day or two. We cannot emulate that. These pastimes, or the activities of the pure devotees are not meant to be emulated. But these are great, saintly, miraculous people. You know, like they talk about in, in Christianity or in the Catholic Church, that if someone is able to perform miracles, you know, they can uh, make him a saint. So these are, these are saints. These are very special people. They descended from the spiritual world. They're called Shaktavesh avatars. So this sort of life is not meant for us. We have to be practical and maintain the body nicely. So, but Raghunath Das Goswami was exhibiting the topmost renunciation, and he was always filled with ecstasy. It's not that he was suffering on account of giving that up. And when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the dedication and renunciation and the ecstasy of Raghunath Das Goswami, what did Lord Chaitanya do? He gave him two special gifts. And these gifts, we're going to talk about in a second. One gift was a stone from Govardhan Hill. Just like on the altar here, we have one of the stones from Govardhan Hill. It's called a Govardhan Shila. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the Stones from Govardhan Hill are the transcendental body of the Supreme Personality of God. The stones are not installed deities. The stones are actually always a manifestation of Krishna. And the stones are meant to be worshipped by people on the topmost platform of devotional service, which Govardhan Shil is. And as we see in Krishna's pastimes, Govardhan actually manifested himself as a gigantic form of Krishna. And he was eating all the food that was offered during the Anakut ceremony. So, so basically, Govardhan is Krishna. And in addition, Raghunath Das Goswami was uh, offered uh, these uh, Gunja Mala, which are little red and white beads. I think they're around the deities on the altar, right? If you look real closely, you'll see them. And this Gunjamala, which I believe only grows in Raj, at least that's what I was told. This Gunjamala, Mala means like a necklace, is a manifestation of Shimati Radharani. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
was so pleased with Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, he gave him a place at Govardhan, which is actually the topmost pilgrimage place of any of the places you can think of anywhere. And he gave him a shelter of Srimati Radharani. And so that was the blessing Raghunath Das Goswami had. And we're going to read a few verses about that today. That brings us up to this point in the uh, sixth chapter of the Anjalila of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, every day, this is an advertisement, every day we're reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, online. And if anyone's interested, I guess you could let me know and you can be, be part of the contact list to, to hear these readings of the Chaitanya Charitamrita and explanations that we're giving. We're on the Anjalila chapter six and hearing about Raghunath Das Goswami. So I think everyone could see that, right? So this is, uh, this is Bengali. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke Sanskrit and Bengali. And Raghunath Das Goswami did also. So Raghunath say Shila Malayavi Paila Goshanira Vipraya E Bhavana Kariya Karila when Raghunath Das received from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the stone and the garland of conchels, he could understand the Lord's intention. Thus he thought as follows. Shila Diya Goshani Samarpila Govardhane Kunjamala Diya Dila Radhika Chalane By offering me the Govardhan Shila, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has offered me a place near Govardhan Hill, and by offering me the garland of conch shells, he has offered me shelter at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Of course, Srimati Radharani is the feminine counterpart of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. And there's no, never any separation between Radha and Krishna. And the devotees of Braj, they approach Krishna through Radharani. And we, when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we are approaching Krishna through Radharani. Hare refers to Radharani in the evocative form. O oh, Radharani, O oh, energy of Krishna, O oh, feminine counterpart of Krishna, please engage me in service. And then Hare Krishna. Krishna, of course, is Krishna. <laughs> invocative also. And then Hare Rama. So Rama is very interesting in the Maha Mantra. It can refer to Lord Rama, for those of you who are Ram Bhaktas. It can refer to Balaram. And it also refers to Radha Raman. So Hare Rama, you got Radha in there twice. <laughs> so that's been analyzed by the Goswamis Pradhamma. Of course the word Krishna means the most attract Krish attraction and ecstasy. Krish attraction, na ananda, ecstasy, and also na getting rid of the material miseries. So Krishna. And our experience is when you chant Krishna's name and absorb yourself in Krishna's name in the Maha Mantra, then all the material miseries disappear if you're able to absorb yourself. So we get that same mercy by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Of course, Raghunath Das Goswami also chanted the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So, Anande Raghunathera Paya Vismarana Kaya Mani Sevilena Goranga Charana Raghunath Das's a transcendental bliss was boundless, forgetting everything. He served the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his body and mind. Anandaguna Raganathera Ke Karibaleka Raganathera Niyama Yena Pashanera Reka. Who could list the unlimited transcendental attributes of Raganath Das? His strict regulated principles were exactly like lines on a stone. In other words, his service to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, was never could be stopped. That's called Nishta, actually. Nishta is a uh, platform in devotional service where one is steady 24 
hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And 360 days a year. All right. <laughs> it's not to get a vacation on leap year. So the words uh, Pashanayara, Reka, are very significant. Raganatas follow the regulated principles so strictly and rigidly that they would compare to the lines on a stone. As such lines cannot be erased at any time, so the regulated principles observed by Sri Raghunath Das Goswami could not be changed under any circumstances. Sare Sata Praharayaya Kirtana Smarane Aharadidra Charidanda Sayanahi Kamitane Raghunath Das spent more than 22 hours out of every 24 chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, remembering the lotus feet of the Lord. He ate and slept for less than an hour and a half, and on some days, that also was not possible. That was impossible. So, uh, that's because he had a spiritual body. Don't imitate. If you imitate, you get sick, you'll die, you go crazy. <laughs> so, actually, for... All of us, we should live normal lives in society, as Lord Chaitanya says. Whatever situation you're in, whether you're uh, Grahasta, Banaparsa, Sanyas, just stay there. Stani, Stata, Shri, Gatam, Tanvan, Mano, Beer. Just take up the chanting of Hare Krishna. And if you take up the chanting of Hare Krishna, it doesn't matter. Kiva, Vipra, Kivanyashi, Shudra, Kena, Nai. It really doesn't matter what ashram or what gender you are. And, and, and you know, it's it's immaterial, it doesn't matter. So Lord Chaitanya, many of his intimate associates were were married. Like Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, Ramananda Roy, King Prataparudra, and some were sannyasis. So there was no distinction that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had insofar as one's external renunciation. In fact, as Mother Krishna Priya mentioned this morning, one of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's most intimate devotees was a devotee named Pundarik Vijanidi, who was an incarnation of Vrishabhanu. Vrishabhanu was right around his father. So it really doesn't matter. And that one of the following weeks, I'm going to be giving a class about the uh, Mahajanas, the 12 great Mahajanas who set an example, like Bhishma, Bali, etc., Narda. And I'm going to explain how some of them are householders, some of them are uh, sannyasis, and it really doesn't matter. So, this is a specific example of someone coming from the spiritual world. Topic is concerning his renunciation of wonderful. Throughout his life, he never allowed his tongue to sense gratification. Chindakari kantavina napareva sana savana savadane papura kaila agnara palana. He never touched anything to wear except a small torn cloth and patchwork wrapper. Thus he very rigidly executed the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I think we'll end with this purport. The principle of very rigidly carrying out the order of the spiritual master must be observed. The spiritual master gives different orders to different people. For example, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and Sanatana Goswami to preach. And he ordered Raghunath Das Goswami to strictly follow the rules and regulations of the renounced order. All the six Goswamis strictly followed the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the principle for progress in devotional service. After receiving an order from the spiritual master, one must strictly try to execute the order. That is the way of success, as Krishna says in the Gita, Tadvidi Pranipatena Padiprasna in the Sevya. You want to realize the absolute truth, then one approaches the Guru, and then one serves Krishna under the direction of the Guru. So, We'll end here. So anybody have any questions about Raghunath Das Goswami or any of the points we made in the class? Yes?
Yeah. No, it's not. <coughs> Lord Chaitanya will not be very happy if I just renounce that right in the physics. <laughs> Why? Because he was showing the greatness, for several reasons, the greatness of his devotees, uh, the uh, spiritual position of his devotees, the uh, dedication of his devotees. Uh, it's an extreme example. But that's not our duty to set that. Prabhupada didn't set that extreme example. So the point is the spiritual master, in this particular case, was Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, engages the disciple according to their ability, their psychophysical nature. So it's a personal relationship. Yeah. So the purpose of casting a mantra is to ask you to engage you in the service? To have Radharani engage you in Krishna's service. <laughs> you have a lot of service. Chanting is also a service. And then one has to, uh, if, if one is taking initiation and vowed to chant 16 rounds, it just depends, uh, then one has to have a balanced life. And of course, one can't say to their children, you know, I'm supposed to chant my rounds, you know, go somewhere else. Uh, so balanced life is required in Krishna consciousness. So if one is unable to chant 16 rounds but hasn't taken a bow, then one should fix a certain number of rounds that are practical for them. I think it's a question of being practical. Especially I see that uh, ladies who have families, sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a struggle to chant 16 rounds. So you chant what you can on a regular basis. Uh, other than, you know, extreme situations, uh, try to chance it to around someone's taking initiated initiation. There are, there are ways you can do it. I know ladies who have to uh, change diapers on babies, they use a clicker instead of bees. So there, there's actually ways, you know, you go for a walk and chat or audition or something like that. In most cases, it is possible, but in not every case. And Krishna may have extended, there may be extenuating circumstances for those who are, something is happening in their lives. So I, I think each and every case, if there's some challenge in chanting the 16 rounds that one has promised to chant, one should approach one's Diksha Guru or Siksha Guru for instructions on what to do. Because there are, you know, we, we have to be careful of applying one yardstick or meter stick to everybody. Uh, there are extenuating circumstances. So, the, therefore, it's required to have interaction with spiritual preceptors. There is some difficulty in that. Okay? It's personal. It's personal. So, any other questions or comments? Or problems, yes. so my mic works. They don't both work at the same time. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, I understand. Yeah. 
That's a very good point Mother Christian Priya made, that, uh, you know, sometimes one can see these extreme renunciation that Raghunatha Goswami executed as uh, showing us what's, not externally what's required, but the mood that's required in order to be a pure devotee, recognize one's eternal spiritual identity and not take it cheaply. Yeah, very, very good. Very, very good point. It's one question online from Pushikesh. What principles can we follow from Srila Raghunatha Das Goswami? The principle of humility, the principle of serving the other Vaishnavas. It's described that he would offer obeisances to hundreds of Vaishnavas a day. The principle of depending on Krishna. Like we see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's surrendering practices, accepting everything favorable, rejecting everything unfavorable. Uh, understanding the Lord is always maintaining one and protecting one. And then uh, being meek and humble and having no separate interest than the interest of the Lord. Of course, Raghunath Das Goswami was, did certain things that would be considered extreme. Let me explain, let me tell one particular pass on this quite interesting. When Raghunath Das Goswami was in uh, chanting by the banks of the Shamakund, he didn't even bother to construct a uh, bhajan kutir or any protection from the elements or from the wild animals that were there. At that particular time in Vrindavan, there, there were actually tigers. I don't know if anyone's seen a Bengali tiger before, but they're quite large. They're as large as, almost as large as cows. And it's very dangerous. So he, out of his extreme renunciation, was just chanting on the banks of the uh, Shamakund. And what happened is that Sanatan Goswami witnessed on two occasions, two different things. One is that Krishna was protecting Raghunath Das Goswami uh, from the tiger with a stick. And then another occasion, he witnessed that Radharani was protecting Raghunath Das Goswami from the sun with her shawl. And so he chastised Raghunath Das Goswami. This is too much renunciation. Build yourself a kutir, and he built himself a kutir. So that, that's also an example that too much renunciation is not good. So there's a, for each and every one of us, we accept what's favorable and reject what's unfavorable. That's actually our renunciation. And it's, if it's favorable uh, to have a big house, then we accept a big house. Simple as that. So there's nothing, that, almost nothing that can't be engaged in Christian service. Practically everything can be engaged in Christian service. That's called Yukta Vairagya. So whatever you have, Manasate Ageya Yogi Shamor Apilam to your body. Nandakashore, your home, your body, your family, engage in Christian service and don't worry about extreme renunciation. It's not required. Renunciation should be uh, to take shelter, stani katam shutikatam shutikatam tan van mano beer, stani stita shutikatam tan van mano beer, taking shelter of Krishna's name and hearing regularly from the Vedic literature, especially from Shri Prabhupada's books. So I think we're going to end now. Thank you very much. All glories to His Divine Grace, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Ki Jai.